We're going inside the toy box with Coco, so let's get cracking! Hello all my explorers and welcome back to Lauren's Adventures Out There. And if you're new, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. My name is Lauren, and I'm with Castle Escapes and Clones, where we discuss everything in the Disney universe. We talk Disney, Pixar, Marvel, Star Wars, The Muppets, 20th Century, National Geographic, Disney Plus, Hulu, ABC. If it is about Disney, we're talking about it. So if you like that kind of content, we'd love it if you would subscribe to our channel, hit the bell for notifications, and do like this post, as it really does help us out. So we are continuing our series from Inside the Toy Box, which is our look at the films of Pixar Animation Studios in chronological order. And today we are talking about 2017's Coco. Before we start, this show is airing during the 2023 WGA and sag Africa strikes. Without the labor of these writers and actors uh, for these shows and movies, we would not have the discussion that we could have today about Coco uh, and other Disney properties. Coco tells the tale of Miguel, a music-loving boy in a family that forbids it. Miguel wishes to perform at the Dia de los Muertos celebration and goes to borrow the guitar of who he believes his great-great-grandfather to be, the famed musician Ernesto de la Cruz. But stealing or borrowing items from the dead on Dia de los Muertos ends you up in the land of the dead. Miguel must find his great-great-grandfather to return to the living, but his journey finds him discovering things are not always as they seem to be, as well as greater appreciation for his family. Lee Unkrich first pitched an idea for the film in 2010. The film was originally about an American child learning about his Mexican heritage after his mother passed away. Filmmakers uh, wanted to refocus the film on a Mexican child instead. In April 2016, Uncritch announced animation had begun while the film's writer, Adrian Molina, was promoted to co-director later that year. To ensure cultural accuracy and genuineness, filmmakers made several trips to Mexico to study the people, the land, and the culture. Uncritch said, I'd seen it portrayed in folk art. It was something about the juxtaposition of skeletons with bright, festive colors that captured my imagination. It has led me down a winding path of discovery, and the more I learn about El Dia de los Muertos, the more it affects me deeply. The team found it difficult animating the skeleton, as they lacked any muscular system, so new methods of animating and technology were created to make the task more doable. According to production designer Harley Jessup, Santa Cecilia is based on real Mexican villages as the team stayed grounded in reality in the land of the living. Set supervisor Chris Bernardi intentionally made the town smaller to make Miguel feel trapped. And art director Burt Berry said they used age building materials to give Santa Cecilia that older, charming city feel. To ensure authenticity of guitar playing, they videotaped musicians playing a song or melody and strapped GoPros to their guitars to use as reference. For the scene in which Miguel plays music, in his secret hideout, the filmmakers used very elegant and lyrical camera moves, according to Lee Unkrich. 
and gentle drifts and slow arcing moves around Miguel as he plays his guitar with very shallow depth of feel to enhance the beauty of the soft focus foreground candles. Coco is the first Hollywood motion picture with a nine-figure budget to feature an all-Latino cast. The only non-Latino was John Ratzenberger, who has voiced a character in every Pixar film. As Unquist didn't want to break Pixar's tradition, Ratzenberg was given a very minor role with one word. Anthony Gonzalez first auditioned for the role of Miguel when he was nine, but was beat out by another boy named Emilio Fuentes. Fuentes' voice, however, deepened due to puberty during the production, and Gonzalez was brought on board. Benjamin Bratt, the voice of Ernesto de la Cruz, was encouraged to watch videos of Mexican actors such as Jorge Negrete and Pedro Infante, who were similar to his character. Bratt found the character similar to his father with a swagger and confidence, and worked in the film as a tribute to him. Alana Ubach, the voice of Mama Imelda, felt that the film, quote, is giving respect to one quality that all Latin families across the universe do have in common, and that is giving respect and prioritizing the importance of family. Mama Imelda's voice was influenced by Ubach's Tia Flora, who was a profound influence in her life. Ubach felt her Tia was the family's matriarch and dedicated the film to her. At the Disney D23 Expo in 2012, Michael Giacchino had confirmed that he would be scoring the music for Coco. Later, Robert Lopez and Kristen Anderson Lopez confirmed that they would be writing a few original songs while Germain Franco and co-director Adrian Molina also joined the team. Originally, Lopez and Anderson Lopez had written many more songs for the film when the film was going to be a quote-unquote break-into-song musical. Plans were scrapped following early test screenings. Disney caused some controversy when it tried to trademark the phrase Dia de los Muertos for merchandising. Mexican-American cartoonist Lalo Alcraz drew a film poster entitled Muerto Mouse depicting a skeletal Godzilla-sized Mickey Mouse with the byline, it's coming to trademark your cultura. More than 21,000 people signed a petition on change.org stating that the trademark was cultural appropriation and exploitation at its worst. A week later, Disney took back the trademark application, saying in an official statement that the quote, Trademark filing was intended to protect any title of, for our film and related activities. It has since been determined that the title of the film will change, and therefore we are withdrawing our trademark filing. In 2015, Pixar hired Alcaraz to consult on the film. He joined playwright Octavio Solis, uh, and former CEO of the Mexican Heritage Corp, Marcela Davison Aviles, to form a cultural consulting group. Box office wise, Coco grossed $210.4 million in the U.S. and Canada, and $603.8 million in other countries for a worldwide total of 814.3 million. Critically, Rotten Tomatoes gives an approval rating of 97%, while critical consensus reads, 
Coco's rich visual pleasures are matched by a thoughtful narrative that takes a family-friendly and deep-affecting approach to questions of culture, family, life, and death. At the 90th Academy Awards, Coco received awards for Best Animated Feature and Best Original Song. The film's other nominations included 13 Annie Awards, winning 11, a British Academy Film Award, which it won, two Critics' Choice Movie Awards, winning both, and two Golden Globe Awards, winning one. Coco was chosen by the National Board of Review as the Best Animated Film of 2017. In January 2023, during Epcot's annual Disney on Broadway concert, the Lion King star, Steven Taylor, announced that a live stage show adaptation of the film is currently in development at Disney Theatrical Productions. Okay, so what did I think of Coco? I, it's one of my favorite films. Um, it's kind of like I've got Inside Out and Up that kind of rotate in the top two spots and then Luca and Coco ro rotate in the uh, three and four spots. So it's all, it's just a favorite of mine. I, being Filipino-American, you know, uh, we also really value uh, family and, you know, we learn a lot of messages about life and death. And I just really related to this film on so many levels, even though it's about Mexican culture. I think that they um, were right in placing this film in Mexico around Dia de los Muertos. I think that was a smart choice. I think it was a great way to differentiate two different worlds. And, um, yeah, I just thought it was just such a wonderful film. The music is fantastic. And I don't really have any complaints about it. So, yeah, did you watch Coco? And if you did, did you love it? Did you hate it? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to know. And if you enjoyed yourself today, We'd love it if you would subscribe to our channel, hit the bell for notifications, and do like this post, as it really does help us out. And visit us on all of our socials down below. Visit our website at www.castlescapesandclones.com. Thank you so much, and we will see you later. Bye!